Well, Grace, that's the last time I take you jousting. Looks like we've been flung all the way back to the Middle Ages. You know, this actually reminds me of an old SpongeBob episode. Let's look back on it while we try to find a way to fling ourselves back to the present. Let's take a trip back to the early months of 2006. Pretend you're watching Hoodwinked while listening to the fray and playing with your Paraka figure. Suddenly, a commercial comes on as part of this event called SpongeBob Lost in Time. These events didn't usually have the same names as the episodes they were advertising, but this episode in question would be called Dunces and Dragons. Now, the marketing for this episode was massive. I remember going to Burger King frequently so I could get all the SpongeBob toys they were giving out. I still have the Statue of Liberty one, even if the color's a little faded. As opposed to being lost in time, my others have been lost to time. The commercial for this aired so much that the image of Patrick eating mutton and saying me thinks it's mutton-tastic has been imprinted in my cranium. The episode itself was pretty good too. SpongeBob and Patrick volunteer to be in a jousting match, accidentally mind you, but they're soon launched all the way back to the Middle Ages. They meet the ancestors of everyone they know and soon end up going on a quest to save Princess Pearl, slay a dragon jellyfish, and defeat the evil Plank Tonamore. Far more exciting than any visit to medieval times I've ever had. One thing many of us came to associate this episode with was the game on Nick.com made to celebrate it. It was extremely popular, and according to the SpongeBob Wiki, it won Game of the Year on the Nickelodeon website. Move aside, Gears of War. This is the real deal. This was made by the highly reputable Sarbakan, so its popularity was almost to be expected. So let's check it out while I introduce this jester to punk music. Beethoven's gonna be awesome with the way music evolves. When we're thrown in, this is the music that greets us. Very tone setting. It's both medieval and upbeat. Perfect energy for something like this. You then have a choice to either play one player mode or two player mode. I tried out two player, but it seemed like Grace wasn't taking this very seriously, so let's stick with one. We then have to choose a character between SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, and Sandy. Sandy is referred to as Dark Knight Sandy, like in the episode, but Squidward isn't referred to as Squidly. Maybe it's just Squidward honoring his family name by dressing up like his great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather, even though he kind of cursed him and all that. Every character has their own special move and an obstacle they're immune to. The goal is to save Pearl from Planktonomore, and you do this by winning a series of jousting matches against a bunch of enemies. You get a certain amount of points for slaying each different kind. The gameplay bears a striking resemblance to the old arcade game Joust. This is funny, because a few years later, Sarbakan would release their spin on the Clash of Triton. It had a strong resemblance to Rampage, another classic arcade game. I guess the developers really liked old arcade games. So when are we getting a Spongebob game based on Tempest? In this, while you are playing to save the princess, you can also try to get a high score. The blacksmith from the episode is the most common enemy, and he's worth 100 points to kill. That's kind of strange, he seemed like a really agreeable guy. The Dungeon Master character is worth 200 points. As for the last one, who's worth 300, we'll get to him in a moment. Level obstacles include stretches of lightning and spikes. These are usually on the ground, but later stages get more creative with where they put them. SpongeBob and Sandy can withstand spikes, while Patrick and Squidward can handle lightning. You use the arrow keys to fly around on platforms while trying to dash into enemies with your spear before they dash into you. You can go out one way on the screen to come in through the other on the opposite end. Occasionally, the dragon jellyfish will fly through. It can kill you in one hit, so you better be careful. If you're playing as Sandy, her special move allows her to dash into the dragon to slay it. SpongeBob's special move gives him temporary invincibility, Squidward plays his clarinet and causes enemies to freeze, and Patrick's causes him to shoot water across the screen to hit anyone in its way. All of these are highly efficient. If you time Patrick's correctly, it's very lethal. Though Squidward's is the best because you can just take everyone out while they're frozen. You collect jellyfish to use these powers. You can also collect stars for extra points. The whole time, you can listen to this really good music. After every round, you're entered into a bonus stage with the other three characters. You try to take them out for points, but special moves don't work here. It doesn't really matter if you win or lose anyway. But the difficulty increases when the new enemies show up. Just look at this. Okay, any day now. You gonna slow down or something? Come on. Okay, get back here. You can't run forever, you know. 
What kind of knight are you? This is really cowardly, all things considered. Darest thou wear garments of dishonor to thy grave? Whew, okay, that's a relief. But as I was saying, ugh, you gotta be kidding me. Some stages are harder than others, but they're all fun. This gave me a good challenge, and I had some serious struggles with getting through the last few stages. You can be at this for a while. The game itself isn't very long, so it isn't the worst punishment in the world for it to send you back to the beginning whenever you lose, but it still hurts just a little bit. There isn't any prize or big cutscene for winning, so it isn't essential to the enjoyment of this. It's a very cool Spongebob version of Joust, and I'd say it's deserving of the recognition it received. Again, Game of the Year material. I don't really have any major criticisms because it's what it needs to be. A fun Spongebob adaptation of Joust with different character options, a two-player mode, and a memorable concept with good music in the background. You can find yourself playing something like this for hours. Sarbakan has done it once again. A good take on an episode that many of us have memories with. It's such a pleasure to revisit. But while we're still in the Middle Ages, let's take a quick look at another medieval game. This is SpongeBob Castle Challenge, The Storm. As soon as you start up, you may or may not be bombarded with enemy fire before you fully understand what to do. It's very fast, and you have to have a quick reaction to everything that comes your way. You're playing as a knightly SpongeBob and trying to reach a castle, but all these knights and walls are trying to stop you. Also check out these anchovy princesses that swoon over you. The mechanics are similar to Number 5's boss fight in Operation Startup. Every obstacle has a specific arrow key you need to press to deflect it. It can be hard to remember which one does what, especially in the heat of the moment, but it's even harder to time it. It isn't entirely clear how close an enemy needs to be for your command to work. You do get the hang of it the more you play, but you lose all your progress if you die, so all that effort can quickly go to waste. Honestly, it might be easier to raid a castle in real life. But actually, this had a sequel that managed to be even harder. But in some ways, Castle Challenge The Escape is an improvement. There's one less command for you to remember, and the ones you use actually coincide with the obstacles. You hit right to hit the ones in front of you, up to hit the ones that fall on you, and left to hit the ones behind you. Now that's much easier to remember. At the same time, the obstacles are being shot at you from all angles, and they're coming in fast. A lot of the time, they even hit you with one as soon as you start the stage. You don't take a lot of hits, so it's easy to go down by the end of the very first round. Then SpongeBob has this really dramatic death scene. Also, Gary's got a cool metal shell. Though riding a snail when you're trying to go fast seems a bit impractical. Maybe that's why it's so easy for the enemy fire to hit you. But that's about all there is to it. These games are interesting ideas, and almost like personal challenges you can take on. If you want to test your skills and try to master these, they may be worth checking out. My strategy was to take a picture of the commands and look back on it whenever I'd need to use one. That might help you get used to them before they become second nature. But with this, we can bring our Middle Age Festival to a close. On that note, it turns out you can travel through time just by being launched far enough. So if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of significant changes to history I have to make. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.